Ladies and gentlemen, what do you call what we just watched on Friday night, man? I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys, man. I don't even know if I could get angry at it anymore. I, I really don't know. SmackDown tonight, another creative blunder from WWE. Nothing made sense on tonight's show. Just blatant, blatantly lazy at this point as we roll on into Summer Scam. Grayson Waller versus Jey Uso in the main event. Don't know why. Don't know why. Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green, they just won the Tag Team Championships. Buried in a match with Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair in the very Vince McMahon-esque, can they coexist? I don't know, man. I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. I really don't. I don't know, man. I'll tell you what, though. I got... I got my alcoholic beverage, man. I got my cold beverage. We are in Orlando on site. Why? Don't worry. Business. And tonight, we're going to the OG OTS venue. And I got one question for you guys on this. Swamp-like Friday night here, you fucking Floridians. What the fuck are you guys drinking? I'll see you over there. Has Triple H been so successful? Why is Triple H running WWE better than Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard on Monday and Friday night? Long-term booking. guys thank you so very much for joining me right here on off the script this is your friday night smackdown post show for july 28th 2023 i'm your host jd from new york as always coming to you live from the ots venue thank you guys very much for joining me on your friday nights wherever you may be man if i sound a little echoey it is because I am not home right now. I am actually on location in Orlando. And if you guys are wondering why I don't sound as beautiful as I usually do, it's because the space that I'm recording in 
was absolutely perfect for me to set my shit up in, but it is quite large, and there is uh, absolutely an echo as I hear it in my headset. So if you, if I if I see you guys complaining about my sound, I apologize. It's just the fact that I am uh, not home until at least Sunday, and I sound a little echoey, man. So I apologize in advance. And we got uh, everything like we usually do, man. We got everything like we usually do set up. Let me tell you something, man. You guys, no matter what, no matter what, Let me tell you something, man. We got a $100 super chat from my guy, Jason Barker. He says, gotta love JD. It's refreshing seeing you considering it's been, uh, I've been going through a little bit of cancel culture myself, not alone in this fight. Jason, I don't know what the fuck's going on with you, man, but let me tell you something, brother. Fuck cancel culture. Fuck it. I don't know why we live in the world we live in today, but uh, I appreciate you being here, brother, and your support means the world to me. Everybody in this chat, your support means the world to me. I look a little bit different. What do you guys mean I look a little bit different, man? I got a fucking $800 camera sitting in front of me. I better look fucking good. I better look good, man. So uh, hopefully everything goes as it needs to tonight, but uh, the sound and the acoustics is not where it needs to be. But I appreciate you guys for all your support, and we're going to get through this. SmackDown tonight. SmackDown tonight. Let me tell you something, man. I, I, I don't even know where to begin in regards to this show. A lot, a, a lot of shit pissed me off in regards to this show tonight. Obviously, the bloodline is leading SmackDown. Obviously, we know Jey Uso, Roman Reigns, they're going into SummerSlam. It is the main event. For SummerSlam, we, we know how great it's going to be. And the story there that is going to be rich. It's not even about the bloodline. The bloodline stuff, I'm not even talking about the bloodline. I, I'm talking about everything else that's revolving around the bloodline. Grayson Waller. This shit pisses me off, man. Gr Grayson Waller. There's no reason why Grayson Waller needs to be in the main event against Jey Uso, especially if he has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on there. It's almost as if WWE booked this shit with no rhyme or reason, no, no care at all for Grayson Waller. They don't give a shit. They sent him out there to get eaten alive and... It did nothing to benefit him whatsoever. Nothing. You'll probably get some geeks online. Oh, well, Grayson, well, he, he looked great at the main event against Jey Uso. No, no. No, he didn't look good at all in the main event. He was a complete fucking afterthought. A complete afterthought. So I don't really understand why anybody's looking at this a little differently than I am. You should all be on the same fucking page as me. Upset. That WWE is constantly taking young talent and at their leisure, just burying them left and right. He looked like an afterthought. He didn't need to be there. He lost the match and nobody is going to remember he was even there because in the grand scheme of things, it's all about Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. So why send him out there in an absolutely nothing match, in a nothing situation to get eaten alive out there by Jey Uso? Ridiculous. Ridiculous booking. And then you get people who are looking at me. Oh, JD has nothing but Vince McMahon on the mind. Oh, JD this, JD that with Vince McMahon. Triple H is running the show. Blame Triple H. It's not Vince McMahon. Triple H did not have anything to do with this half-assed, illogical garbage tonight. Oh, but JD, Vince McMahon just got... Spine surgery. He's in the hospital. He's recovering from a major surgery. He didn't have anything to do with this show tonight. Are you fucking kidding me? Vince McMahon left that emergency room, and the first person that he was on the fucking phone with was his son-in-law, telling him exactly how SmackDown was going to go tonight. What does Vince McMahon getting surgery have to do with anything? I don't get it. 
Do you genuinely believe Vince McMahon, no matter what he's going through, didn't book this show? You genuinely think some surgery, some bullshit surgery is going to keep Vince McMahon away from doing what he usually does, and that's destroy any WWE television show that has his name on it? Vince McMahon could be dead for all we care, and he'd still have some sort of influence over SmackDown and over Monday Night Raw. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whatsoever. An absolutely just ridiculous creative decision. Guy hasn't won a fucking match on the main roster yet. He's been on the main roster since April. And he's had three matches. Most of that has had to do with a recovery from a broken leg. But my God, man, sending him out there in that situation was an absolute waste of his time. Meanwhile, you should be building him up as something special. There was a report just a couple of days ago that WWE has high hopes for Grayson Waller. And that WWE is taking their time with Grayson Waller. And they got something planned for him at SummerSlam. Maybe it's with John Cena. Maybe it's with The Rock. Maybe it's with LA Knight. Maybe it's a rematch against Edge. Do you genuinely believe that anybody gives a fuck about Grayson Waller after tonight? I know I don't. I don't give a single shit. Grayson Waller should be Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller should be allowed to be Grayson Waller. Feed him wins. Treat him like he's an upcoming guy. Not using him like some independent talent to put over something way bigger than anything Grayson Waller is going to ever be a part of. An absolute misfire by WWE. Speaking of misfires, the narrative this week is book women's wrestling better, especially if you're AEW. Britt Baker got in some hot water. I'll talk about that sometime this weekend. Britt Baker got in some hot water with her match against Taya Valkyrie on Wednesday's Dynamite. It was awful. It was absolutely awful. You know it. I know it. They know it. It was awful. Listen, man, even the best have off nights. Even the greatest in this sport have off nights. It was an off night. I don't condone what happened to Taya Valkyrie after the match was over with everybody body shaming her and calling her names and this and that. But when you got Taya Valkyrie calling out bullies for body shaming and fat shaming, then you have Britt Baker, who was her dance partner in that match, going online and dumbing down the criticism of the match by resorting to the same thing that those people did to Taya, bullying, that's when we have a fucking problem. Book women's wrestling better, they say. You're upset with how the women's division is booked in AEW. So am I. You're upset with the way the women's division is booked in WWE. So am I. So am I. I've called this shit out seemingly every single week. Nobody cares to listen. Nobody wants to understand where I'm coming from. Oh, JD's negative. Oh, JD's this. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 this. When are you going to open your fucking eyes to the situation? When are you going to open your eyes to how WWE looks at women's wrestling? Tonight was the most perfect example of any of that. And somehow, some way, this will go right over everybody's head. Vince McMahon, not Paul Levesque, Vince McMahon ordered Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair to have a tag team match tonight. Not separate tag team matches, a tag team match as partners. Can they coexist? This is what WWE did on Friday night tonight. They put two women who are in a triple threat match with Asuka on Friday night SmackDown in a tag team match. Two women who are vying for the World Heavyweight Championship in that women's division on Friday night in a tag team match to see if they can coexist. Because on this random one-off evening, Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville had a problem with Charlotte Flair. They just won the tag team titles. 
10 days ago, 11 days ago, they just won the tag team titles. And nobody seems to understand that this is a problem. Why did Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville need to be in that match tonight? Better question is, why is Charlotte Flair wanting to team with Bianca Belair when Bianca Belair is the woman who should look at Charlotte Flair with an evil in her eye? Neither one of these women would want to team with each other if the creative actually made sense. Why would I want to team with my tag team? Why would I want to team and be a tag team with somebody that I'm actually wrestling in two weeks for the WWE Women's Championship? It doesn't make sense. And Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville did not look good in that match. I don't know what the fuck anybody else watched. What I watched was a burial. A burial. No, but you won't see that. The fucking simpletons online will look at it as, oh yeah, they were in the ring with Bianca Belair and, and, and Charlotte Flair. That's gotta be WWE management giving them high praise. No, it's not. It's WWE shitting all over the women's division. That's exactly what it is. How many times do I need to explain it to you? There is nobody in that division that exists outside of Charlotte and Bianca. Asuka is barely hanging on by the skin of her fucking asshole. Bailey is only there to help guide EO to where she needs to be, and I'm not even sure if WWE is completely high on EO Sky. Who else is in that division? Shotzi? What is WWE going to do with Shotzi with her brand new haircut? You think WWE is going to push Shotzi to the moon? They're going to strap the rocket pack to Shotzi Blackheart? No, they're not. Absolutely not. You're wasting your fucking time if you expect WWE to make sense of their women's division. Nobody but Charlotte and Bianca exist on that show. Nobody. You want better women's wrestling? Look at the people that book this shit. They don't give a fuck about women's wrestling. They don't give a shit about anybody else but the top tier names. The women's revolution is a complete fucking farce. It's bogus. Everything about it is bogus. There is no revolution. The only revolution that exists is the revolution of Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. Same thing with AEW. The only revolution that exists in AEW is Britt Baker. That's it. Nobody else on that fucking roster even gets a chance to get where they need to be. Most of it is management, but if you don't think there's some political fucking bullshit going on behind the scenes, you're a complete fucking dummy. All these women have the same thing in common. Ego, maniacs. Every single one of them. They will do everything to make sure that the spotlight is on them and nobody else. Do you think Charlotte Flair wants somebody else taking her spot? Do you think Charlotte Flair wants anybody else on that roster to get an opportunity? If there is no opportunity for anybody else, that means Charlotte Flair is going to get all the opportunities. Can't say the same thing about Brett Baker because... Quite frankly, Britt Baker's actually been pretty decent this year. Before Jamie Hayter got hurt, Britt Baker was actually giving all of the spotlight to Jamie Hayter. And then injuries happened. But Britt Baker got herself into hot water with what she did on social media and what she did in that match with Taya. It wasn't anything directly going on backstage. Unless you believe what Lufisto had to say on social media, which I actually do believe. Because I got called out by a majority of the women's locker room in AEW for exactly the same thing that Lufisto is blaming them for. Meanwhile, I didn't know what I was talking about, but it's quite the coincidence that Lufisto went on social media and basically uttered the same fucking thing that I and Jesse and everybody else was saying on YouTube. That there is a political pull in the locker room no matter where you are with several women who wants to hold everybody else back. Everybody wants better women's wrestling. These major promotions in the United States don't give a shit about women's wrestling. When will you understand that? They will never give a shit about women's wrestling. These major promotions only put women's wrestling on their television show 
because they have to, not because they want to. WWE does this women's narrative and this women's revolution and equal rights and all this other shit because they have to. They don't give a shit about women's wrestling. If they did, you'd see more of a variety on television, not the same shit every single week. You'd see more than one storyline on TV instead of the same shit. How many women's wrestlers does AEW employ? A good 50, 60 women? How many women do you actually see on television on a weekly basis? And if you do, how much television time are they actually getting? WWE and AEW have one thing in common. They hate women's wrestling. The revolution is bogus. It never existed. The only time it ever existed was when Sasha Banks and Bayley blew everybody away at TakeOver Brooklyn. Those are the only two women that I think truly believed in a revolution. Nobody else did. They are the only women that I look at when I look at who really believes in this industry about a women's revolution. I'm talking about AEW and WWE. I'm not even mentioning Impact, who probably has the best women's division in the United States right now. Because they actually know what the fuck they're doing over there. And to give him some credit, because I'm not a fan of his creative direction on Tuesday night, Shawn Michaels sometimes knows what he's doing with the women on NXT, sometimes. He's had his fair share of stinkers as well because he takes direct orders from Vince McMahon. Direct influence on how Vince and Bruce usually do things. He's basically a mirror image of what they do. He's not somebody that's going to go out there and be himself. The women's revolution is a disaster. You look at Monday Night Raw, Rhea Ripley's the only thing that really matters in that division on Monday night. There's nobody else that even comes close to what Rhea Ripley is doing right now on WWE television. Rhea Ripley's the MVP of WWE. Did WWE straddle Rhea Ripley with that title to build Rhea Ripley up as the next big thing? They can't even find a suitable fucking opponent for her leading into SummerSlam. It's been like pulling teeth to find a suitable opponent for Rhea Ripley since she's won the title from Charlotte at WrestleMania. Has she done anything memorable since winning the title? No. She's lucky she's in Judgment Day. Because if she wasn't, WWE would feature Rhea Ripley just like everybody else, as unimportant. Tell me when I am telling lies. There is absolutely nothing that I've said here that you or anybody else can refute. Nobody. That was the biggest takeaway from SmackDown tonight. The biggest takeaway from SmackDown. Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar, they had their final for the United States Championship Invitational. Absolutely lame ending after what we now know about the ending of that match. It was all a work. It was all a work. WWE couldn't even give Santos the win on Friday night after wasting three weeks of our time waiting for this match tonight. Santos may go on to win the United States Championship, but he didn't beat Rey Mysterio. He didn't really beat Rey Mysterio. WWE protected Rey Mysterio from taking a loss because they don't truly believe Santos is ready to beat somebody like Rey Mysterio. So if he's not ready to beat somebody like Rey Mysterio, why am I going to believe he's ready for the United States Championship? Absolutely dumbfounded by some of the decisions that they made creatively tonight. Not everything has to be so hard. Not everything has to be so difficult. WWE likes to make things difficult. WWE likes to see people complaining because it gets the traction. If you're not talking about them, then they're upset. This show sucks. Everything about this show sucked. Friday night, the quality on Friday night is absolutely scary. Coming out of WrestleMania, the quality on Friday night has fucking dipped every single week coming out of WrestleMania. Downright scary where we were before WrestleMania to where we are now going into SummerSlam. 
And you still have people out there believing that Triple H is completely running the show creatively in WWE. He is not. These shows do not mirror anything that Triple H would do 100%. If Triple H has a stance and an aspect on these shows, it is very minuscule. He's basically there to be the fall man. Vince McMahon cannot take control over anything completely until the sale is done. Again, I tell you, when that is done and the sale is completed, that's when the party starts. Otherwise, red flags will go up and everybody's going to be asking questions. Where's Triple H? What happened to Hunter? None of this show made sense. We're going to try and make sense of it tonight right here on the podcast. Again, I appreciate you guys. Joining me this evening, you guys are awesome. Again, I apologize if I do sound a little echoey. I am not home right now. I will not be home till Sunday. But we'll try and get through this the best that we can. Some of you guys said I look big. Do I look big? I don't know, man. Do I look big? Maybe because I'm working out. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. We'll get through this. I appreciate you guys very much. Listen, follow me on social media. At JD from NY206. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Cameo. Thank you guys for all the cameo love as of late, man. We fulfilled like six cameos this week. It's crazy. Phil, I got you, brother. Hopefully you enjoyed that, man. Sorry, uh, when I did your um your cameo, brother, I was at the airport yesterday. Sorry if it sounded like shit, bro. Again, man, follow me on social media. It's where you guys can keep up to date the best way possible on the channel and on the podcast. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Make sure you guys go check out all the other videos that you might have missed on the channel. I may have some extra content for you guys tomorrow. So look forward to that in your sub boxes. Got a busy day tomorrow. So I'm going to try and get some content out for you guys. So you got something on your Saturday and then we'll be home on Sunday. Don't know what we're doing for Sunday, but I might actually go do a full-fledged podcast on Sunday. Live. May actually cover some NXT. Great American Bash on Sunday, man. Get right back into the swing of things. Super Chats are open. Get them on in. Thank you to Jason Barker with the $100 bomb earlier. Dumb Wop. Oh, I see you, brother. JD, you look different. New camera. No, it's the same camera that I've been using. It's my Sony camera. My EVZ one. Just the lighting in this Airbnb that I'm in right now, man. I don't have spotlights coming at me. I got lights coming down on top of me, so... Can't travel with everything, fellas. Can't travel with everything. Again, we'll be back on Sunday, man. We'll be back to normal on Sunday. Super Chats are open. Get them on in. Jason, thank you for the $100 bomb. If you guys want to get them on in, we'll have last call as always at the end of the show. And memberships, get them on in as well. If you guys want to come to the venue and become a channel member, I would really appreciate it. And hit that thumbs up, man. Let's try for 1,000 likes tonight on the SmackDown post right here on OTS. Let's start things off with the bloodline, man. They open SmackDown per usual. Main event, Jey Uso. Main event, Jey Uso, man. WWE, there was a report that a narrative has come down from Vince McMahon about nicknames, key words, key phrases being shilled by the commentary team. We got main event, Jey Uso, the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. We got the ring general, Gunther, the Scottish warrior, Sheamus. The rated R superstar, Edge. Not everybody needs a fucking nickname. 
Not everybody needs to be called some cheesy, lame, fucking cartoonish nickname. Seth freaking Rollins. The best one of all is Big Bronson Reed. Thanks, Vince. We know he's fat. Just a three-letter word that sounds a lot better than fat, Bronson Reed, Vince. I get it, bro. I get it. Come on now. Main event, Jay Uso. Main event, Jay Uso is now in your city, Jay Uso says. All of a sudden, Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, and Solo Sokoa walk out. Tribal combat means anything goes. There are no countouts, which wipes away the champion's advantage at SummerSlam. Jay has a chance to win the championship, says Michael Cole. No, he doesn't. Reigns got in the ring and asked New Orleans to acknowledge him. Fans chanted Uso. Reigns said the Usos are popular because of him. He told Jay he's called the right-hand man for a reason. He scolded Jay for acting like the tribal chief by opening a show he's on. He asked if he thinks he's the tribal chief now. Jay says he's never wanted any of that. He said he used to watch Roman's back and do what family does. Support him, man. He says he did it, no questions asked, because he believed in him. He says he thought Roman could lead the company and lead the family, but in reality, you broke the family, and now I have to do what I have to do, Oos. He said he broke the family and the bloodline, and Jimmy, it is all your fault. Reigns told all of the fans who were booing to shut up, he told Jay that he is jealous and that he brought all of this on himself. He said when Jimmy got hurt, Jay asked for a championship match because Jay is selfish. He said the only reason Jay became the right-hand man is because Jimmy was hurt. You didn't have a chance. You took that from him. He said he screwed his twin brother. So Reigns is trying to guilt Jay Uso by taking this championship match. He says his younger brother likes and respects me, meaning Solo. He respects me more than he does you. That was the most interesting line in the entire opening promo here by Roman Reigns. Solo Sokoa respects Roman more than Solo respects Jimmy or Jay. Now, the reason why that sounds the way that it does is because it does sound a little suspect. Roman Reigns is speaking on behalf of Solo Sokoa. I don't know if Solo gave him an eye look or Solo gave him a weird look standing to his right during this promo. But I do suspect that that will come into play sooner rather than later. Solo's not going to take Roman speaking on his behalf like that. Not much longer. Does Solo really dislike Jay Uso? Does he really respect Roman more than he does his brothers? I don't know, man. That's the one line that stood out to me. The one line that could be very problematic for Roman Reigns. So when I beat you, you're done. We're going to wipe you off the face of this earth. You're going to be wiped from history, he tells Jay Uso. Reigns the next Jay to imagine, and he laughs little smirk on him. Imagine if you beat me for the world championship. Fans cheered. They want Jay Uso to win the world championship. He said that means he'd no longer be the tribal chief, but he'll still be Roman Reigns. He says he can still do whatever he wants and still do whatever he has to do. He said Jay has nothing. He said it blows his mind that he still wants to stand there and do it. You can't beat me, he said. He yelled that Jay can't beat him, and he doesn't understand how he thinks otherwise. Jay says he thinks he can beat him because I've already done that, and I'm the only one who has done that. He put his hand around Roman's back, around his neck, leaned in, and told him and at SummerSlam, I'm going to beat you again. Reigns got angry. Jey Uso's music played. He danced very happily out of the ring. Reigns looked at him, 
soaked up everything that Jay had to say, and Solo looked very angrily as Jay walked away from Roman Reigns. Not much more has been added to the narrative. It's the same old thing. WWE continues to churn their wheels forward as we go towards SummerSlam. Just like Cody Rhodes, nothing has been new. Nothing new has been added to this storyline. It's the same narrative. He's trying to guilt Jay into taking this title match. He's trying to blame everything that's happened to Jimmy on Jay. He's trying to really throw it in Jay's face that Solo respects Roman more than he does his own brothers. And Jay on the rebuttal is going to tell Roman, I'm going to beat you because I've already done it. And come SummerSlam, I'm going to beat you again. This is all fine. It's all quality. It's just nothing has, nothing's been new. Nothing, uh, nothing is really taking it to the next level. We're already at that level. I think we're all ready for this match to happen at SummerSlam between Jey Uso and Roman Reigns. They haven't thrown another log on the fire here to keep it burning. It's just WWE waiting to get to SummerSlam to play out this scenario and get us to the next chapter, which would be payback. No DQ, no count out, no rules, tribal combat. This gives WWE an out to make things very interesting without actually having Roman look weak in, in this match against Jey Uso. Jey Uso is not beating Roman Reigns. Jey Uso will not be the one to beat Roman Reigns. That is already determined. Already. And I said this, and the most interesting thing about it is people still want this to happen, but don't really know the gravity of the situation. They don't know the reality of the situation. Do you genuinely believe WWE is going to give Roman Reigns another pay-per-view, back-to-back pay-per-views, and have him lose again? That's all you need to know. Jey Uso got one pinfall victory in a non-title situation in a tag team match. They pinned Roman Reigns to the shock of everybody after three and a half years. The last one to beat Roman Reigns was Baron Corbin. Jey Uso, after three and a half years, did the unthinkable. Has been the only man to beat Roman during this title run. Do you genuinely believe WWE is going to do that again for a second time in a row? Not happening. Absolutely not happening. But it's going to be a very interesting story. Does Solo get involved? Does Solo take the opportunity away from Jay? Does Jimmy come back to the fold? And does Jimmy align with Roman and betray his brother? We don't know. The greatest thing about this storyline is that it's unpredictable. We don't know where it's going to go. But if the last couple of shows that WWE's put on regarding the bloodline, the story is going to take another big twist at SummerSlam, and WWE's going to have a very storyline-driven narrative coming out of that match. We've seen it in Saudi. We've seen it at Money in the Bank. And there's going to be another one happening at SummerSlam. Mark my words. WWE's going to do right by this. But right now, it's not really feeling next level. Let's get it to the next chapter and get things exciting again and get the ball rolling. Right now, WWE is just churning their wheels, hoping to get into SummerSlam as quickly as possible. Rey Mysterio, one-on-one with Santos Escobar. Coming up next, this is the final of the United States Championship Invitational. Before this match, there was a promo backstage with Jey Uso clapping and smiling. He walks past Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller says he loves his passion out there. He said he'll probably still lose, but he'll give him the Grayson Waller rub. He invited him after losing to Roman to be on his talk show and called him Little Jay. Jay started mocking, laughing at him, and then he punched him right in the face, left him laying on a box of production crates. Waller fell backwards, grabbed his jaw, And clearly, WWE was setting this up for a match later in the evening. Rey Mysterio, one-on-one with Santos Escobar. I was actually looking forward to this. And WWE completely wasted our time with the entire WWE United States Championship Invitational. They did nothing 
to pay off this two-week fatal four-way tournament, this fatal four-way gauntlet. Santos Escobar, Rey Mysterio, you would think, would have an absolute banger of a match. WWE took this and wasted every single person who watched this and their time. Escobar had control early. He worked over Mysterio's leg. Austin Theory was shown on camera in the skybox, eating popcorn, critiquing the match to himself and himself only. Don't know why WWE does these things. He looks pathetic, honestly. Escobar turned his attention to Rey Mysterio's arm, working on that. Escobar kicked Mysterio's leg. And Mysterio slapped the hell out of Escobar, so they were not afraid to throw blows at each other. Escobar returned the favor. Mysterio set up for a 6-1-9. Escobar rolled to the outside. Ah, that one well scouted. Mysterio hit a senton onto Escobar. We go to commercial break. We get back from commercial. Mysterio landed an arm drag back inside the ring. Mysterio goes up to the top rope. He landed a senton. Mysterio went for a cover. He got a two count off the senton. Escobar comes back with a series of leaping elbows. Hits an enziguri. Escobar hit a leg drop. One, two, kick out by Ray. Mysterio rolled up Escobar for a two count. Mysterio ran at Escobar, who caught him with a tilt to world backbreaker. Mysterio was on Escobar's shoulders, and the two make their way to the outside in the same position. Mysterio went for a baseball slide, like he usually does. He slides underneath the ring, and he does that little nice splash on the outside. Escobar followed and moved out of the way of the baseball slide. Escobar followed with a tope suicida in the ring to the outside on Rey Mysterio. And we go to another commercial break. He didn't think anything of the typical tope suicida from Santos Escobar. All of a sudden, we get back from commercial break and Rey Mysterio is being attended to by medical physicians. Michael Cole showed us a replay before we went to commercial break with Santos Escobar diving onto Rey Mysterio. I'm trying to figure out while watching this replay what exactly happened because the match came to a screeching halt. They show the replay again. And I thought that Santos might have collided heads with Rey Mysterio. And this was a legitimate injury. WWE showed the replay and it looked like Rey Mysterio's head, the back of Rey Mysterio's head, bounced off of the concrete on the outside. He was not physically able to continue the match. And WWE called the match at around 11 minutes or so, awarding Santos Escobar the victory. And he is now the number one contender for the United States Championship. And in two weeks, not at SummerSlam, in two weeks, Santos Escobar versus Austin Theory will battle it out for the United States Championship. Now, the replay was shown about three or four different times. And it looked like it was a serious situation. And at that point, I'm like, this got to be real. Rey Mysterio's head physically bounced off the concrete, and you saw him bounce on the outside, only for them to go to commercial and then come back and the match is stopped. WWE worked an injury angle at the end of this match. Rey Mysterio was not hurt. Rey Mysterio is okay. Rey Mysterio was being attended to by physicians, and Jessica Carr, the referee, stopped the match, and it was a worked outcome. This was all done purposely. They awarded Santos Escobar a final spot here against Rey Mysterio and then called the match and awarded the match in the lamest way possible with absolutely no heat behind it to Santos Escobar. Now, you'll have people on social media that don't mind this because it protects Rey. You know, people on social media not minding this because Santos won anyway, and I think the majority of the people want Santos to win and go on to wrestle Austin Theory. That's not where my problem is. You see, my problem is not with who won the match or how the match ended with Ray and Santos. The, my, my problem is the lack of, I would say, the lack of trust in Santos Escobar. Now, granted, this match shouldn't have even taken place. 
WWE wiped that off the face of the fucking earth last week when Santos Escobar already beat Rey Mysterio in, an, in a non-title match, which theoretically won. He won clean, by the way. He won in a non-title match clean last week, theoretically giving him already the number one contendership for the United States Championship. So the match tonight didn't need to take place. And even if Santos lost... He would have gotten a championship match anyway, theoretically, because he already pinned the champion a week prior. He's already the number one contender, even if he loses. So why is this match taking place? Nobody's going to look at it that way. Nobody's going to think about it that way. I do. I do. Now we have Santos and Ray ending in the way that it did. My problem is none of this. It's stupid. It's pathetic, it's lazy, but my problem is the lack of trust in Santos Escobar. If WWE is really setting up, and realistically, they should already be thinking about taking this title off of Austin Theory because he's done nothing with it. Nothing. Santos Escobar should win the United States Championship. If this is where they are going in two weeks, Santos needs to win the United States Championship. I know for a fact that WWE wants a Latino champion. Santos is that guy. Rey Mysterio may actually be pushing for Santos to win the United States Championship as well. The reason why the LWO exists is because, yes, WWE wants to sell that merch, and WWE wants that Latino presence, and they needed that going into Puerto Rico at Backlash. I get it. But WWE on Friday night has always, you've heard this yearly, wanted a Latino presence. They wanted that demographic on Friday night. They got it. Who's to say Rey Mysterio isn't vouching for Santos Escobar either? This may be what he wants. This may be coming at the request of Rey Mysterio. Give it to Santos. This is the guy. I'm not going to be here for, you know, too much longer. I'm at the end of my career. You guys want a Latino presence on this show. This is your guy right now. Go all in on him. Did they go all in on him? Does WWE really trust and back Santos Escobar for a United States Championship when he can't even get past Rey Mysterio in a clean way? That's my problem. If you're going all in on Rey Mysterio, if you're going all in with Santos Escobar, you should have won against Rey Mysterio tonight. You didn't need to hide that fact behind some bullshit worked outcome. Some bullshit worked injury angle at the end of the show. Oh, it protects Rey Mysterio. Sure it does. But why does Rey Mysterio need protecting on Friday Night SmackDown? What are you protecting Rey Mysterio from? He is not capable of losing against Santos Escobar. Santos was younger, quicker, faster, better. Santos Escobar has all the tools to take Rey Mysterio and be that guy in WWE. Not according to the fucking people in power over at WWE, because if they did believe in Santos that way, he would have beaten Rey Mysterio clean tonight. They don't. Will it happen in the future? Maybe. Maybe. Are they waiting for a bigger stage? Maybe. I could see this as a WrestleMania dream match. Rey versus Santos. Mask versus career. Something that I pitched years ago when he was in NXT. And I pitched for Dominic to be down there and win the Cruiserweight Championship from Santos. Way back when. Maybe that's where they're going with this into WrestleMania. And they're not doing it yet. But if he's good enough to win the United States Championship and if he's good enough to be in discussion for the United States Championship, why isn't he good enough to beat Rey Mysterio? That's my problem. The ending sucked. The match, not too good. All anybody remembers is Rey Mysterio was injured in this match. Again, WWE dropped the ball creatively as usual. Santos should be looked at as the next guy to take Rey's spot. All I saw tonight is WWE is not ready to go all in on Santos Escobar, and they needed to take a shortcut out of giving Santos what should have been a clean victory. Bianca Belair was backstage. She was being interviewed. She was interrupted by Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. The tag team champions, 11 days ago, beat Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. 
They mocked Belair for not being a champion. Meanwhile, they are. Chelsea Green then mocked Charlotte. Belair told Green, hey, not to be disrespectful. Charlotte showed up, called Green and DeVille bullies. And from there, Charlotte suggested a match, teaming with Bianca against Sonya and Chelsea. Great. Don't know why that makes sense, but whoever booked that match clearly does not have the best interests of the women's division in his heart. Hit row. Hit row. I'm not going to do the shit row shtick here tonight because I don't really have it queued up on my, uh, on my soundboard. But you guys know that they're shit row. You guys know it. This is what they're used for now. Comedy fodder. Hit Rose in the ring, and without fail, thank God, L.A. Knight interrupted them. L.A. Knight called top dollar Uncle Phil. L.A. Knight then recalled Dalla saying Nola is corny, and then he said something about B-Fab, which got the crowd to pop. He basically said that the way B-Fab is looking at L.A. Knight, that her loins were on fire, and that she is basically horny for L.A. Knight. I got a kick out of it. I laughed. I don't know about you guys. L.A. Knight did his catchphrase. Crowd was on fire. We got a match with L.A. Knight and Ashante Adonis. Pretty basic stuff here, but they clearly do not have any direction at all for L.A. Knight. Zero. I'll get into what LA Knight is doing at SummerSlam a little bit later. And it really, really, really reeks of WWE just giving a little but not giving too much. Because in reality, they don't really want to push LA Knight because we all adore LA Knight. We all want LA Knight. So WWE is giving us a little piece of fucking scrap. They're giving us morsels because they basically have to at this point. If they don't do it then people are going to complain. So they're giving you a little. And at SummerSlam, they came up with this absolutely generic and lame idea to get LA Knight on the card. Should he be on the card? Absolutely. Could he be better off at SummerSlam? Absolutely. Should he be in the United States Championship match at SummerSlam? Absolutely. They booked this guy at SummerSlam, and it really doesn't look good on paper. It just looks like WWE is doing because they have to, not because they want to. It's the theme of WWE lately. They do because they have to. They do because they have to, and if they don't, then people will fucking cry, bitch, moan, and complain. And they don't want to hear it. Not because they want to. Backstage, the Street Profits, they were hanging out with Bobby Lashley. He told them that they need to lose the sweats. He was basically looking at Angelo Dawkins, who's in sweatpants and a track jacket. Montez is always dressed sharp. Lashley brings in a brand new wardrobe rack for them to choose new outfits. And that's the way the segment came to a close. So they're really inching this little by little, week by week, it looks like we are actually getting a brand new stable with Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Now, he did mention Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Are they going to be a part of this group? I don't know. Carmelo Hayes still has to lose that NXT World Championship, which right now, I don't know what the fuck they're doing with him. I know he's got his match against Ilya Dragunov on Sunday at the Great American Bash, but they really haven't portrayed Carmelo Hayes as the champion he needs to be either. So maybe he ends up losing and he gets called up to the main roster with Rick Williams and we get a brand new five-man stable on Friday night. But Bobby Lashley did mention Carmelo Hayes tonight and basically Bobby Lashley said that Carmelo Hayes recommended the Street Profits to Bobby Lashley. They come at high regard from Carmelo Hayes. Is this the new Hurt Business? Is WWE giving the fans the Hurt Business, but in a different aspect? A different vibe? What about Cedric and Shelton? Where are they? Are they going to have anything to say about this? Or does WWE not give a fuck about Cedric or Shelton? 
I don't think even the fans care. I think the fans just want to see the Hurt Business back on TV. It's interesting. They're slow playing it. They're slow burning it. So we'll see what happens. Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. Tag team match. Can they coexist, pal? Defeated Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. Non-title match. Obviously, this was a complete waste of time. Don't know what else I need to tell you on top of what I've already stated to you in the beginning of this show. Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville did not look good here tonight. If I'm Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville... I'm fucking pissed. Now, is this WWE punishing Chelsea Green for allowing Matt Cardona to walk around with their championship titles over in Japan? Is this WWE punishing Chelsea Green for what Matt Cardona is doing with the tag team titles in general, wearing them around, wearing them around on the indies? Him calling himself the tag team champions in the women's division. I don't know. Wouldn't be surprised being how petty WWE can be. But I don't understand why, if you're not Chelsea and Sonya, that you're not fucking pissed at this decision. Imagine winning the tag team titles 11 days ago, and you do absolutely nothing with them in that two-week stretch. And WWE puts you in a non-title match against Charlotte and Bianca, who cannot lose at all because they are both a part of a triple threat match with Asuka at SummerSlam for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Imagine doing nothing with those titles in 11 days only for you to lose a non-title match to two of the biggest names in women's wrestling. How is that showing Chelsea, Sonya, or the tag team division? <coughs> there is no division. The tag team titles, sorry. How is that showing it any respect? How is that showing Chelsea and Sonia any respect? I would have a problem with that. I don't know why more people don't have a problem with that. Now, granted, the titles don't really mean much of anything. I mean, the more gasoline you can pour on these fucking titles, the better, in my honest opinion. I would absolutely love to see them burn in a pit of fire. I really would. There is no use for them. There's no need for them. They are the most absolutely devalued championships in all of wrestling. They are the most irrelevant, worthless piece of hardware in all of professional wrestling. Name the lowest of the low on the indies. It's more valuable than the women's tag team titles in WWE. Can they coexist? Chelsea and Sonya had a little bit of control here. They changed course here. And then the tag team champions lost control. Belair comes in, landed a double suplex on both Chelsea and Sonya. Charlotte, she gets the hot tag. She came off the top for a double crossbody. Charlotte hits a series of chops on Chelsea. Charlotte landed a fallaway slam on Chelsea, which was followed up with a clothesline and a two count. Chelsea tagged in Sonya, who was rolled up by Charlotte for another two. Charlotte, it's a fallaway slam on DeVille and went for the figure eight. DeVille worked out of it. Belair tagged herself back in, drop kicks to DeVille. Green got in a blind tag and cut Belair off. She went for her unpretty her. Charlotte got in the way. Charlotte then tagged herself in while Belair was going for the KOD. So Belair had this match won and Charlotte needed to take the spotlight, of course, all to herself. Charlotte hit a boot to Chelsea's head and pinned, and pinned Chelsea Green for the one, two, three. And then after the match, Charlotte and Belair argued. And Belair was, why did you tag in when I had the match won? Why would you do that? Blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. Uh, why was this match made? How does this make Chelsea and Sonya look? You'll get some geek online telling me that, oh, they were in the ring with Belair and Charlotte. This did good. WWE thinks highly of them that they put them in a match with these two ladies tonight. What I saw was 90% of a match dominated by two of the women who are in the championship match against Asuka at SummerSlam. And the team of Chelsea and Sonya look like a complete jobber team. Titles are worthless. 
But this, this is how WWE treats their champions on a regular basis. And nobody seems to have a problem with it. Why was the match made? Vince loves they can they coexist angles. Don't know why this needed to happen. Don't. Charlotte should not want to team with Belair. Belair should not want to team with Charlotte. There should be a fucking problem with that. Chelsea and Sonia. Why would they accept this? Knowing that they were the team that WWE just gave the titles to. You want to change the tag team division. Everybody thinks that the tag team titles are going to be great on Sonya and Chelsea. WWE already told you exactly what they think of their new champions. They are losers. Losers. An absolute waste of my fucking time. JD, you my guy and all, but you be crying too much. Vito, suck my dick, Vito. Get out of my chat, Vito. I'm not your guy, and you're not my guy. If you're in my fucking chat telling me that I'm crying when I'm dropping truth, bomb after truth, bomb after truth, bomb to you, and you still claim that I'm crying, suck my dick and get the fuck out. I don't need you or anybody else like you here telling me that I'm fucking crying over garbage on your fucking television every single week. I take offense to that. Absolute fucking garbage. And you sit there and you accept it. And you hear me say everything that you know is right and you still complain that I'm complaining. What the fuck are you doing here then? Go watch somebody else who watched this show and this scenario and everything else that I've talked about already went over their fucking head and they won't say anything about it because they need to be on the red carpet next to Cody Rhodes and Brandy Rhodes when something like his documentary comes out. You know who was there? Chelsea Green and Matt Cardona were there. Get out of my fucking shot. Backstage. Bailey and Io. They were talking in their locker room. Bailey had a message from Shotzi in her backpack. And the two were going to leave until Asuka showed up and stopped them. Asuka said she's going to wrestle two of the best ever. At SummerSlam in Charlotte and Bel Air. Asuka mocked EO for potentially cashing in her briefcase. EO then said she will leave SummerSlam as the women's champion. WWE had Shotzi cut her hair two weeks ago. How many times have we seen her on TV in the last two weeks? Zero. Zero. What are they waiting for? What are they waiting for? And EO, is she going to cash in at SummerSlam? I would certainly hope so. Because she doesn't cash in, Asuka's losing that fucking championship right to Charlotte. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. But I love the narrative when Shotzi cut her hair. Oh, this is going to be a great push for Shotzi. How many times have we seen Shotzi on TV? Zero. We're living vicariously through fucking messages and notes in, in a backpack like we're in fucking fourth grade via Shotzi. Call me when there's something interesting regarding Shotzi Blackheart on television. We'll be waiting a long time for that to happen. Adam Pierce was backstage. He's talking on the phone when he was interrupted by L.A. Knight. WWE booked another match at SummerSlam. It's the SummerSlam Battle Royal. What's a brand split, you ask? I don't fucking know. Sheamus cut off L.A. Knight, who said to Adam Pearce he wants to be in the Battle Royal. They've already botched L.A. Knight and the United States Championship. And L.A. Knight said if there's one guy that needs to be in this Battle Royal, it's L.A. Knight. Yeah. Sheamus walks on in, and he's got a problem with L.A. Knight. And he tells L.A. Knight that he's going to be in the Battle Royal, and that the Battle Royal ends with him. Adam Pearce then says... Both of these guys are going to be in the Battle Royal, and both of these guys will wrestle next week 
for momentum on Friday Night SmackDown. Great. Great. Two guys who can't afford a loss in a match together. It's a great job there, Vince. Great job there. Who wins? Sheamus needs a win as he's ice cold, and LA Knight cannot afford a loss to somebody like Sheamus because he's white hot right now. A battle royal. That's what they got for LA Knight. A battle royal. Now, the normal fucking geek on Twitter is probably going to look at this as some big opportunity for LA Knight. They botched Money in the Bank. They botched the United States Championship. They had nothing for him coming out of WrestleMania. They even botched this feud with Bray Wyatt. But you sit there and you continue to tell me that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just wait. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. LA Knight's going to get a push. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm done waiting. I'm done waiting. The fuck are we waiting for? WWE's answer to everybody who wants to see LA Knight get a major push on WWE television is having him win a battle royal at SummerSlam. What exactly does the winner of this battle royal end up getting? Has anybody figured that out? Or is that for momentum as well? Until WWE gives me what the winner of this battle royal gets, you know what you could do with this battle royal? Shove it up your fucking asshole, Battle Royal. WWE does not want to push LA Knight. I don't give a fuck where you're getting your reports from. They don't want to push LA Knight. WWE right now is listening to everybody rant, bitch, complain, and moan about LA Knight. They hear the reaction, and they fucking hate it. Vince hears the reactions, and he fucking hates it. He does. Don't know how many times I have to tell you, LA Knight, no matter how popular he is, is going nowhere. It would have already happened if WWE thought highly of LA Knight. You really think they're going to push somebody who mimics Stone Cold Steve Austin and Dwayne The Rock Johnson into his gimmick? They may get the reactions that they want from LA Knight, but that doesn't mean they like it. The more you get over, the less he will get over with the management in WWE. The more that LA Knight makes noise, the more the fans make noise about LA Knight, the less WWE wants to push him because they had no desire to push LA Knight at all. Vince McMahon turned this man from LA Knight into Max Dupree, only for him to go back to LA Knight because Vince needed to go away for a little bit before ultimately coming back. When Vince walked back into the WWE and took back over creative the way that he did, LA Knight was already over. So instead of getting rid of him because it would have been too blatant, For Vince to do that, Vince worked within the boundaries of using LA Knight on TV, and slowly but surely, LA Knight got over. Vince had no choice but to use LA Knight. Do you genuinely believe Vince McMahon wants to push LA Knight on TV when back before he went away, LA Knight was set to walk out of the company because Vince changed his fucking name and his entire persona? Now you want me to think Vince is all of a sudden going to give LA Knight what he deserves because we want L.A. Knight? When has Vince given us anything that we've asked for? And when has Vince McMahon, let me, let, me, let me rephrase that. When has Vince McMahon ever given us anything that we've asked for that we know is the right creative decision? I can't remember a time that's ever happened. This is the same guy that was going to give us Dave Batista and Randy Orton at WrestleMania 30 and had to listen to us because the Yes Movement was overpowering everything going into WrestleMania. If he didn't give us Brian at WrestleMania winning the World Championship, what do you think would have happened? I remember like it was yesterday that Rey Mysterio came out at number 30 and everybody wanted Brian to come out at number 30 in the Royal Rumble and win it all. Rey Mysterio got booed in Philadelphia. Or wherever that fucking, that Royal Rumble was. Wherever it was. I don't remember where it was. He got booed out of the building. Do you genuinely think Vince is going to go against the better judgment of his shills and push LA Knight? I don't think so. Triple H has no power over LA Knight. He doesn't. 
He gave him his shot back. He gave him his gimmick back. But that's where it ends. Do you think a battle royal is going to all of a sudden resuscitate LA Knight and give LA Knight that big push? What exactly is he winning? Stop being gullible, man. Stop being gullible. LA Knight is going nowhere. The, ba- the reason that WWE is putting LA Knight on SummerSlam is because we've made enough noise to want to see him at SummerSlam. But he wasn't good enough for a United States Championship. He wasn't good enough to wrestle Austin Theory for the United States Championship. Neither was Santos Escobar. He wasn't good enough to beat Rey Mysterio. That's what WWE thinks of all the up-and-coming stars on Friday night. Keep dreaming. Karrion Cross beats Carl Anderson in two minutes. Sorry, was I supposed to care about this? Another guy WWE doesn't care for. Absolutely worthless is the OC, and absolutely worthless is Karrion Cross. Kudos to Cross, man. He's trying, he's trying, he's trying. He's really trying out there. But WWE, another guy that they are just never going to get behind. How much more do we need to see? How much more waiting are we going to need to wait for, uh, for, for carrying across? Two minutes. Anderson attack Cross to start the match. Anderson landed a leaping neck breaker. He got some decent offense here in the two minutes that they were in the ring. Scarlett distracted. Cross took advantage. Big back elbows. Saito suplex. And Cross hit his new finisher for the one, two, three. Looks like a modified flatliner. And that was basically it. After the match was over, Cross choked Anderson out until AJ Styles and Meachin ran down for the save. And that was basically where it ended. So we're still continuing the Cross and AJ Styles program. Does anybody truly still care about this AJ Styles and carrying Cross program? I know I don't. Jey Uso. He went one-on-one against Grayson Waller. I'm going to need you guys to look at this in a different way. You're going to hear a lot of narrative on social media. A lot of narrative on these other fucking goody two-shoe, fucking soy boy, almond, coconut, milk drinking bitches in the community. You're going to hear this from a lot of different people. WWE loves Grayson Waller. WWE's high on Grayson Waller. They put him in a main event with main event Jey Uso. He main evented SmackDown. Great. I don't give a fuck what he main evented. He could have main evented WrestleMania. He could have main evented fucking SummerSlam. He could have main evented a fucking one-off show on Mars for all I fucking care. He's a loser. He's a fucking loser. I don't give a shit who he's in the ring with and where he was in the ring with them. A loser. Guy's been on the main roster for three months now, more than that, and hasn't accumulated a single fucking win on the main roster yet. Now, but but keep thinking WWE's high on Grayson Waller. If they can't give this guy a victory, if they're not competent enough to give this guy a fucking win yet, How else am I supposed to look at Grayson Waller other than a fucking loser? Waller had control. Uso fought back with a big elbow. Grayson Waller got back into the match with a big boot. Uso came back and he slammed Waller with a kick right to Waller's throat. Waller fired up, raked Uso's face. Uso stood up, hit an enziguri. Uso was playing up to the crowd. All of a sudden, Roman Reigns music hits. He walks down the aisle. He was with Solo and Paul Heyman. Waller took advantage because Jey Uso was distracted by Roman Reigns pulling up a seat in the aisleway to watch his match close SmackDown. So we go to commercial break. Go back to the match. Waller was working a side headlock on Jey Uso. Jey Uso fought out of it. They're on the second rope. Waller dropped Uso with a right hand. Big elbow drop for a two count, which looked great. Waller went for a kick. Jay ducked. He lifted Waller. Waller worked out of it. Hit a spine buster. Waller mocked the Rock's people's elbow with one of his own. And Uso moved out of the way, and he started firing up. 
Big hip attack. Waller moved. Waller ran into a super kick from Uso. Jay stared at Roman. Landed the spear. Now, but keep thinking that Grayson Waller's over with WWE management. This guy just ate Roman's finisher from Jay Uso. Uso went to the top, hit the splash, one, two, three, and that was the way the match came to an end. At the end of the match, this is where things got a little crazy. Sokoa attacked Uso from behind. Solo lifted Uso, went for the spike. Jay ducked it, hit a super kick on Solo. Roman ran into the ring, and Jay landed a spear on Roman. So he's doing his best to fight off two on one here. Jay went to the top, but Solo pushed Jay off. Solo planted Uso and grabbed a hold of Jay. And then Roman and Solo did a double spike and spear combo. Not once, but twice. Roman held up the championship, flaunted it around in Jay Uso's face, told him that he wants it. He'll never have it. He's never good enough to get to that point. And Roman held the title up in Jay's face as SmackDown came to a close. This entire show was fucking garbage. I don't know how I could sit here and tell you guys every little detail about how WWE is operating and what they do and how they work. And you look at this show and continue to fucking listen to the people on social media telling you that this was a good show. This was a good show. This was an okay show. This wasn't the best, but it was serviceable. No, this show sucks. This show sucks. WWE is getting so creatively fucking haphazard going into SummerSlam and nobody seems to think anything of it because you're all excited about SummerSlam and WWE PLEs usually have been spot on in 2023. That doesn't give WWE the excuse to fucking skimp on these shows and give us half-assed fucking creative finishes here. SmackDown is shit. Open your eyes and realize what the fuck is going on here. This entire show was a creative fucking mess like it usually is. And the quality of SmackDown coming out of WrestleMania has dipped significantly where we sit now on Friday night. Ridiculous. That's all I got for you guys, man. Appreciate you being here. We're going to get into these Super Chats in just a little bit. Make sure you guys follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Make sure you guys go check out all the other videos that you might have missed on the channel. Hit that thumbs up. Thank you for 2100 tonight. Hit that thumbs up. Let's try for a thousand likes in the chat tonight. We we'll really appreciate it. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys thought of SmackDown tonight, man. You can leave me your favorite emoji. Let me know via your favorite emoji what you thought of SmackDown. Mostly shit emojis will be in the chat. And like I said, man, last call. Let's get those super chats in as we wrap up here. We're going to get into it. Let's start off with my girl, Michelle Moran, with a $2 super chat. I really thought Sammy was coming to help Jay. Sammy has nothing to do with this anymore, Michelle. Sammy has absolutely nothing to do with this anymore. Jason, thank you again, brother, for the $100 super chat. I really appreciate your generosity, man. Fuck cancel culture, brother. MGM Ballin with a $4.99. Wow, today was an awful day, and watching SmackDown didn't help. OTS will, though. It always does. Gonna be here till the end, brother. Thank you, Ballin. Whatever you're going through, brother, it will pass. It will pass. Phil. 999. Thank you, brother. Quality of SmackDown has gone downhill. They're using people like Walter. Or Waller, I should say. Not Walter. Walter is actually a bright spot on WWE television. They're using people like Waller at the expense of the bloodline. 
go into collision tomorrow and i can't wait thanks for the cameo stay safe brother enjoy that show man collision is going to be a great show i will be here live covering it should be awesome made baby with a five dollar super chat jd understands the undeniable kavorka of the megastar yeah Oh, I get it. Does WWE get it? No. AJ with a 499. No message. Thank you, AJ, for your generosity, brother. Tone C with a five-month membership. Sipping on a coffee. I catch the SmackDown post show the next morning before work. SmackDown was skippable, to be honest. OTS for life. Thank you, Tone C. AJ, there you are, brother with a 499. Man, JD Vince giving us hot garbage on a weekly basis is just wrong. LA Knight in a battle royal is disgusting. Don't know what to tell you, man. Sue Childress with a $5 super chat. I'm drinking champagne because I've made it through dialysis and I'm ready to hear the truth from JD. Sue, congratulations. Enjoy that cold champagne, Sue. On ice, always. May Baby becomes a new membership or a new member has a new membership. May baby, what the fuck are you drinking? William Sweeney with a 199 off topic. As a Braves fan, what made you a fan? David Justice, William. Good old DJ, David Justice. Tay Tay, the savior with a 199. Is SmackDown becoming as bad as Raw? Yes, it is. I'd actually say SmackDown is worse than Raw right now. Believe it or not. I would actually go out there and say Raw is better than SmackDown. Not by much, but SmackDown is just awful. It really is. Summer history with a $10 super chat. Me and my son went to SmackDown tonight. We're on the ramp. The main event advertised off camera was Gunther versus Shinsuke for the belts. Trash show. Hit row. Why? Be well, man. Summer history. Listen, brother, I appreciate you reaching out to me, man. Thank you for the $10 super chat. The biggest takeaway from you going to SmackDown tonight, man, is spending time with your son. Never regret that, brother. But I will say, man, when you really want what I'm thinking, this is where. When, when, when you really want what's happening on these shows, you come here, man. But you taking your son to the show, man, that's all that should really be on your mind. And you should concern yourself with just making him happy, man. Honestly. So good on you. Phil with a 499. Women's wrestling needs to be better, but WWE and AEW simply don't care. Politics are everywhere, but it's especially in professional wrestling. It's sad. Man, I don't know what else I could tell you guys, honestly. You know, you know I've talked about this several times, man. Nazir James and Real Metalhead 21 with new memberships. Gentlemen, the fuck are you guys drinking? My guy, Hooligram, with 32 months. Thank the stars. This month is basically over. Your content continues to help me get through life trials. Nothing but love and respect for you, OTS for life. Hooligram, I will agree with you there, brother. July was awful, man. July was just a tumultuous month, brother. Was not a fan of what happened in July, man. I'm looking forward to a better August. 
Hope you are well, man. Thank you for 32 months, man. You're getting close and close and closer to that elusive 36 months. Love it. Hikaru Saki. Hikaru Suki. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, man. Or you or her. I, I, I don't know. I, I apologize. Hikaru. Hey, JD. Today's my birthday. Was wondering if I could get a Raquel. <laughs> Rodriguez. Gonzalez. Hikaru, thank you and happy birthday. Birthday cake emojis for, for Hikaru in the chat. Hollywood guy with the $5 super chat. What happened to LA Knight's push? Is he going to be pushed all the way to catering? God, I hope not. Oh, well, they think this battle royal is a push for LA Knight. Sure thing. Channel Cortez with a $5 super chat. I appreciate you, Channel Cortez. My audio tech headset you recommended arrive. They work and sound great. My G1 Climax reviews improved little by little thanks to you, my IWC chief. Well, now, Channel, what are you talking about, brother? The Audio Technica headset. You got the regular headset like I have? These are my roads. I usually use the Audio Technicas. I think they sound a little bit better on what's coming through the ears. But what did you get? Did you get the regular headset or did you get the headset with the microphone attached? I'd be, ever, I'd be very interested to know how that sounds, man. You gotta get yourself a microphone, though. Nothing beats a good headset with a great microphone. I got some pretty beast microphones, man. I got the Shure SM7B. I got this Rode PodMic USB slash XLR mic that I use on the road. Uh, I have a... Earthworks Ethos, I believe I have as well. But I appreciate the $5, brother. Hack with the 10 months. Why would LA not care for SummerSlam and a Battle Royal announced moments earlier? They didn't even announce what it's for. Is this his push, JD? I'm sure it is, brother. I have no idea. Maybe he just wants to be on SummerSlam. Jay Patterson with a $5 Super Chat. Damn shame AEW is having this great show tomorrow. It may suffer its lowest ratings because there's an extremely major fight tomorrow. Yeah, the thing is, Patterson, I don't know when those UFC shows start. What, what time do those UFC shows actually get going? Is it like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock? I mean, you could watch both. Why do, you, why do you need to, you know, worry one about the other or one over the other? Watch Collision and then watch the show, the, the UFC show. Make a night out of it. Or watch Collision on Sunday and watch the UFC, sh UFC show on Saturday. Keith Tunstall Jr. with the two months. Watching you while I'm on my third shift. Thanks for being here, JD. Listen, man, I'm glad I could bring some calm and some entertainment to your third shift, brother. Thank you. Joseph Taylor with a five dollar super chat. Roman got booed in Philadelphia winning the Royal Rumble 2015, but got cheered in Philadelphia beating Sheamus for the WWE title. Make that make sense. The fans aren't stupid, Joseph. Uh, Phil, I, I don't know if I do a stream setup tour, man. I really want it to look, like, pristine. I mean, my home setup is not bad at all. I mean, it's fucking great, but... I don't really have anything there that's, like, blow away, man. I don't really have... You know, the, the, the this neon RGB fucking... You know, like office, like all these content creators have. I don't have fancy shit in the background on shelves or anything. Just a space. My desk is the nicest thing in the entire office. 
Tay Tay with a 499. LA Knight in the SummerSlam Battle Royal. Nah, nah. LA Knight deserves better. Yes, he does. Alex Ali with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Alex. Anyways, I'm going to collision tomorrow. New champs? No. Adam Cole and MJF are not beating FTR. William Sweeney with a 199. WWE will push Knight into that hole and bury him. Yes. Cisco with 15 months. I'm going to be at Raw post summer scam. Watch for the OTS on third row. My boss gave me tickets. That's the only way I will go, brother. I will look for that in the third row, brother. Hopefully you're on the hard cam. Love it. Love it. Lauren with 17 months. Hey, peeps. Sorry, I've been MIA. Just been going through a lot. I haven't been watching either SmackDown or Raw lately. I just came to see your reviews. Any Summer Slam returns. Lauren, I'm going to predict Randy Orton returns at Summer Slam. Rich Gamble with 15 months. I listen, JD. Keep speaking your truths. And the hell with cancel culture while I sip on some Casamigos. That's what I like to hear, Rich. Make sure that shit is chilled and on ice. Trevor with an I-99. Barely tuning into SmackDown and Raw outside of the bloodline. SmackDown is nauseating. As soon as I saw Charlotte wanting to team with Bianca, I turned that off. Met Adam Cole on Tuesday. And I'll be at Collision tomorrow in Hartford. Enjoy the show, Trevor. Should be a great show. Probably the best collision show yet, honestly. Golden Faces with a new membership. What are you drinking tonight, brother? Appreciate you. William Sweeney with a 199. WWE equals weak, wasteful, embarrassing. Sounds about right to me. Sounds about right to me, man. Another day's been locked away inside my mind. It's hard to find the reason why I'd even try. What is going on in the chat, man? I don't understand why uh, there's a problem in the chat. We're about to get out of here and people are causing problems. And made baby with a $5 super chat. Honestly, JD, the only guy who should be beating Roman is the megastar. You can make it make sense. LA is heavyweight title potential. Potential. Hunter sees it. Hunter may see it, but Vince is the only decision that matters, brother. The only decision that matters, sadly. Guys, that is all I got for you on this Friday night. I really appreciate you hanging out with me, man. Again, sorry if I sounded a little echoey tonight. We'll be the same way tomorrow, and then Sunday, early, 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 I'll be home. But I hope you guys enjoyed the show regardless. I appreciate you hanging out tonight. SmackDown was trash. Hopefully, I made it make sense for you guys, as always. Follow me on social media. I will be live tweeting during Collision tomorrow, man. I can't wait for Collision. At JD from NY206, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Go check out all the other content on the channel. I should have something up for you guys tomorrow as well. A little extra in your sub boxes. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the memberships and the recommitments. Hit that subscribe button down below, and please don't forget to hit that bell and hit that thumbs up. Helps me out tremendously. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow night. AW Collision. Better than you, baby. And FTR for the AEW Tag Team Titles. See you guys right back here on OTS. Is anyone listening?